Chapter Two, Two Months Prior. Amanda Adams stared at the tiny gray room and sighed. This was going to be her new home away from home, at least for the next year, and it was rather depressing. Well, it's got a lot of potential, her mother said with a false brightness as she looked around. Amanda raised her eyebrows. Potential. Maybe for a horror movie, boring white walls dotted with myriad holes boxed the room in. Two small brown dressers with two drawers each separated two bare mattresses on metal frames. Rolling her suitcase into the room, Amanda hoisted it onto the left bed and shivered at the groaning cacophony of creaks that answered back. She crossed to the right bed and pushed on it. Hoping for a better outcome, but a similar noise resounded. Right, potential. Crossing her arms, she emitted another sigh and surveyed the rest of the room. Two small closets framed either side of the doorway. One wall held a small sink and a vanity with a cloudy mirror. Two study desks took up the remaining space. Come on now. I know you can't paint the walls, but you can hang pictures, right? Amanda nodded. We just aren't supposed to put holes in the walls, but I guess that's not a hard-followed rule, she said as she glanced at the holes that contradicted her statement. I don't think I brought enough with me though to cheer this up, so we'll go shopping and get some more pictures, with your bed made up and some bright-colored towels. It can at least look a little more homey, and we're only a six-hour drive away, so you can come home on long weekends, or we'll drive up. Yeah, I guess you're right. Amanda crossed to her suitcase, unzipped it, and began removing the clothes, while her mother grabbed a towel and began cleaning the cloudy mirror. Suddenly, the door slammed open. Amanda dropped the shirt she had been holding in surprise and spun around. A girl with long black hair, shaved short on one side, and a nose ring entered and narrowed her eyes at Amanda. "Who are you?" Amanda swallowed and stepped forward, extending her hand. "I'm Amanda. I guess I'm your roommate." The girl rolled her eyes and pushed past Amanda, ignoring the hand. Crap! I told them I wanted a single. Oh, um. Well, maybe they ran out. Amanda stammered as she dropped her hand. The hair on her arms bristled at the girl's brusque demeanor. She looked to her mother for help, but she just shrugged. The girl flung her backpack on the right bed and glared at Amanda. A chill ran through Amanda at the girl's icy blue stare. Well, I'll be asking them to look again. I don't do roommates. She rifled in her backpack for a minute, turned and glared one more time, and then abruptly left the room, slamming the wooden door for a second time. Amanda stared at the closed door and blinked. Well, this should be fun. Maybe they'll change the room after all. Though the words were positive, her mother's voice was filled with doubt, mirroring Amanda's own. I can only hope. Amanda returned to the job of unpacking, and when she had finished, she locked the door and followed her mother to her mother's car. They had driven up in two cars, so Amanda would have a vehicle to drive home in if necessary. As they walked around the local Walmart, filling the cart with fun pictures and colorful towels, Amanda couldn't help thinking that it still wasn't going to be like home. She wasn't going to have many of her own things. There would be no brother and sister bursting in while she was trying to study, or Kate rattling on about the latest trends as they quizzed each other. And if that girl remained her roommate, it was going to be an uncomfortable year. Regardless of what she hung on the walls, when she returned to the dorm, Amanda opened the door cautiously in case the mysterious, angry roommate was there. But the room was empty and looked exactly as she had left it. Taking the pictures out of the bag, 
along with the poster putty, she began hanging them over the bed she had chosen. Her mother cut the tags off the towels and hung one by the sink and placed the others in one of the drawers beneath it. Amanda finished hanging the posters, stepped off the bed, and surveyed the room again. While it still didn't feel exactly like home, it did feel warmer than when she had first arrived. Are you sure you're going to be okay? Her mother asked, pulling her in for a hug. Amanda rolled her eyes good-naturedly as she hugged her mother back. I'll be fine. You have to let me grow up sometime, mother. I know, but I didn't think it would happen so soon. She wiped a tear from her eye and then pulled Amanda in for another hug. Come home as often as you need to, okay? Okay, Mom. After another few awkward hugs, Amanda finally ushered her mother out of the dorm room. As the door shut and the silence crept in, she turned back to the bed and sighed. She had hoped that she might meet another girl like Kate, someone she could relate to, but this roommate, whatever her name was, didn't seem like she wanted to be friends at all. Rifling through her backpack, the only thing she hadn't completely unpacked yet, Amanda pulled out her Bible and prayer journal and sat on the squeaky mattress. Though her prayer journal was just a spiral notebook and not a nice leather-bound one like Sandra's, it accomplished the same goal, and she'd had it since joining Sandra's prayer team three years ago. It was nearly full now, and she was excited about the prospect of having to get a new one soon. Amanda flipped to the last entry and dug a pen out of her bag. On the next available line, she added, Patience to deal with my roommate. And the words to reach her. She tapped the pen against her teeth as she thought about what else to add. Wisdom in how to further God's plan here. Having no idea what God had planned for her at the university, she figured she would leave the request broad and just listen for his wisdom. After closing the door, she set the journal beside her on the purple bedspread. Then she picked up the Bible and flipped it open to John, where she had last been reading. As her fingers touched the page, she smiled. No matter how many times she opened it, the Bible always transmitted a feeling of peace and happiness. It had ever since she was a small child. Her mind drifted back to the day her father had led her in accepting Jesus as her Savior. If you are ready for God to come in your heart, you just repeat after me, he said. Amanda nodded at him. She wanted nothing more than to know this heavenly father he spoke so highly of. Father, I know I have sinned, he said. Father, I know I have sinned, she repeated. But I also know that you died to save me from my sin, and I want you to rule my life. She repeated the statement and immediately felt a warmth wash over her. With wide eyes, she looked up at her father, who smiled. You felt it, didn't you? He asked. She nodded. Good. Now the next step is to know all there is about God. You can never learn enough. In fact, how about we start reading the Bible together, and when you get old enough, you can read it on your own and we can discuss it. She nodded, eager to read with him. He pulled her onto his lap and opened the important black book to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, he said. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And that's what they had done. Amanda had been a precocious child and an avid reader at the tender age of five. But the Bible's vocabulary had been a little challenging until she was older. Even when she could read the words herself, she still didn't always understand the concepts. So he had set up a chart of the books with a point system, and she had earned points for every book she read and could discuss with him. In this way, he helped her understand the parts she missed as they discussed it. Then she could trade the points in for treats. She had never told her father, but she would have read the books for free, partly because she loved learning about God and partly because she always looked forward to those discussions with her dad. 
He was often busy with work, but he always made time for her in the evenings when she wanted to discuss God. At 10, he had baptized her, even though he wasn't the pastor. He had been a deacon of the church at the time, though, and they had agreed he could. Amanda had only grown from there, telling everyone she met about Jesus and his love for them. It hadn't always been easy, especially in a public school where Christianity was frowned upon, but God had helped her stay strong, lead several friends to Christ, and helped her form a fellowship of Christian athletes at her high school last year that she hoped was going to continue just as strong this year. Propping the pillow up, Amanda leaned back against the wall and drew her knees up to serve as a stand for the Bible. As she scanned the page for where she had stopped, the door flew open again and the roommate entered, stopping short at the sight of Amanda's open book. Oh, God, you're one of those? Disdain dripped from her voice. I'm sorry, one of what? Amanda placed her finger on the spot she had just found and looked up at her. One of those Bible beaters. The girl's nose wrinkled in distaste as an ugly sneer crested her face. Amanda chuckled and smiled. I am a Christ follower, if that's what you mean. The girl rolled her eyes, mumbled something under her breath, and pulled out a pair of headphones. She plugged them into her phone and then turned up her music. Flinching at the loud beat that escaped the headphones and filled the room, Amanda turned back to her Bible, trying to block out the noise. The words jumped on the page as she tried to focus, and after reading the same sentence four times, she decided to finish her devotional later. As she closed the book, her stomach rumbled. Food sounded like a much-needed distraction. Though Amanda hoped the girl would decline, she figured it would be rude not to at least invite the roommate, since they were going to be spending a lot of time together. She waved her hand to get the girl's attention. The girl rolled her eyes but pulled one headphone back. I'm going for some food. Would you like to come? The roommate flicked her hand in dismissal and relief flooded Amanda's body. Grabbing her key and ID card, she hurried out of the room before the girl changed her mind. A dingy brown carpet ran the length of the hallway. Though Amanda had known the dorm hall was old, she had hoped maybe the university would have spruced it up some. Identical brown doors lined the hall, and a set of stairs sat at either end. Amanda headed to the right and down the flight of stairs, which opened to another hall on the first floor. Though nearly identical to the second floor, an information desk filled some real estate directly across from the front entrance. A mousy girl in glasses sat behind the desk, her nose buried in a book. Rows of mailboxes sat behind her. Hi, can you point me in the direction of the cafeteria? Amanda asked as she approached the counter. The girl's eyes flicked up briefly. We don't have one here. You'll have to go to Bledsoe Gordon Hall. Her eyes dropped back to the book. Amanda took a deep breath and clenched her teeth against the snippy reply, trying to escape her mouth. Was everyone at college going to be this rude? Okay, it's my first day, though, and I seem to have misplaced my map. Do you have another one? The girl turned and grabbed a piece of paper off a counter behind her. She held it out, never looking up from her book. It must have been riveting. Thank you. Amanda took the paper and sat down in one of the chairs near the counter to peruse it. Her eyes scanned the rectangles for the words, You are here. When she found them, she placed her finger there and read the names of the closest buildings to find Bledsoe Gordon Hall. Sneed Hall, Doak, West, ah, there it was, Bledsoe Gordon Hall. It certainly wasn't one of the closest buildings, but it didn't seem that far away. Folding the map, Amanda placed it in her pocket exited the doors and turned left. Though Lubbock was, for the most part, flat and brown, the campus stayed relatively green. 
probably due to the sprinklers that ran incessantly. A few trees even popped up on the landscape, though they were barren of leaves currently in the heat of late summer. Wishing she had remembered her sunglasses, she squinted and held up her hand as a shield until her sensitive eyes adjusted to the light. Beads of sweat trickled down her back as she trekked across the grass. A few other people were out, most carrying boxes into other dorms, but some lounged at picnic tables reading or chatting with friends. Oh, how she wished Kate had come to Texas Tech with her. But she couldn't begrudge Kate's choice to go to the same college her brother was attending. After nearly losing him to a drug addiction, Kate had wanted to be closer to him. Still, it would have been nice to have her best friend here with her. Bledsoe Gordon came into view, and Amanda turned up the cement steps. As her hand reached the silver handle, the heavy door flew open, knocking her down the steps and onto the jarringly hard ground. Her head flew back and her teeth snapped together, sending a pain across her jaws and down her neck. Oh, sorry, are you okay? A male voice asked. Amanda shook her head to clear the stars and struggled to stand. Gritting her teeth, she blinked back the tears threatening to spill out from the throbbing of her rear end and head. Gingerly, she rose to her feet, dusted off her backside, and focused on the man on the steps. Close-cropped blonde hair framed a ruggedly handsome face. His eyes were the color of the ocean, and his nose had a chiseled-from-stone appearance. A gray t-shirt covered his broad shoulders, showing off his muscular arms and chest. His waist narrowed, and under his shirt he wore tan cargo shorts. Brown flip-flops finished off the look, giving him a casual air. Sorry, he repeated. I didn't see you there. Yeah, I got that, Amanda said. Though the stinging was subsiding, she knew she would be sore for a few days. Um, well, hey, can I buy you lunch? No, I'm fine, really. As she stepped past him, he grabbed her arm. Shaking off his hand, Amanda whirled, turning angry eyes on him. He stepped back, holding his hands up in defense. Sorry, Amanda said, but I don't even know you. I'm Caleb, he said, sticking out his hand, and I'm really not a jerk. Please, let me buy your dinner. Amanda cocked her head and regarded him. He appeared sincere, and surely there would be more people inside. Okay, she agreed, smiling hesitantly and shaking his proffered hand. Lead the way. I'm Amanda, by the way. He flashed a charming smile and held the door open. Haven't you already eaten? Amanda asked as they stepped into the hall. No, I live here. I was getting something out of my car for my friend. Won't he be wondering where you are? The hallway in this dorm looked exactly like hers. Had none of these dorms been renovated recently? Nah, he'll be okay. Caleb led the way down the hall, which opened into a large cafeteria at the end. Round tables full of students filled most of the room. The other side housed an assembly line where students could pick up food and then check out at the end. After grabbing a sandwich, salad, and some fruit, Caleb and Amanda sat down at an empty table. So where are you from? Caleb asked. Amanda finished chewing the grape she had just popped in her mouth before answering. I'm from Mesquite. How about you? Houston. I can't say there's much to do here, but at least it isn't as muggy. She nodded, remembering her trip to Houston in high school. Kate's aunt had lived there, and one summer Kate had asked Amanda to go with her. The heat had hit as soon as she deboarded the plane, flattening her red hair to her forehead in a sticky mess. To cool off, Kate's aunt had driven them to the neighborhood pool. But even the pool water had been so warm that they had been forced to sit in the hot tub first before jumping in the pool to at least make it feel colder. So what are you studying? Caleb asked, before taking a bite of his sandwich. Amanda narrowed her eyes at him, 
unsure how much information she should give out to a perfect stranger, even if he was a ruggedly handsome perfect stranger. Counseling. She decided to keep it vague until she knew more about him. What about you? Business right now, but I'm not sure that's where my passion lies. What do you think you'd rather do? She asked. Her counseling instinct had kicked in, sensing that there was a story behind the slight sadness of his statement. I think I'd rather be an architect. His blue eyes sparkled as he spoke, and her heart flipped and began beating faster. I always loved building things, even as a kid. So why aren't you going into architecture? His face fell and his shoulders sank. My dad, he sighed. He really wants me to go into business with him, but he owns a furniture store, and I just can't see myself really happy running it. She nodded, knowing that feeling all too well. Though her own family had always been very supportive of what she'd wanted to do, she had known a girl in high school who had wanted to pursue acting, but her parents' desire was for her to become a lawyer. The girl grew so stressed every time the future was brought up in class that she had given herself ulcers. It's not my place, but your career is the rest of your life. I think it would be hard to do something you're not passionate about. You don't know my dad, he said, shaking his head. She shrugged. I know, that's why I said it probably wasn't my place. But I do think sometimes, as much as you want to please your parents, you have to do what's right for you. If it helps, I'll pray for you. Amanda stuck a grape in her mouth and watched for his reaction, hoping he wouldn't be offended by the offer to pray for him. He was intriguing, and she wanted to know more about him, but only if he were open to God. Thanks, I'd like that, he said. Amanda smiled, and they finished the rest of dinner in a companionable silence. Well, it was very nice meeting you, she said, standing and placing her trash on the tray. Caleb stood as well. Can we meet up again? he asked. Amanda bit her lip even as her heart fluttered. Should she give him her number? Though she didn't know him, he appeared genuine, and she could always use new friends in this unknown territory. Plus, it was just a number. It wasn't like she was going to jump into a relationship with him. Even if he was handsome, that wasn't her style. Curiosity tamped the small amount of trepidation, and she agreed. They exchanged cell numbers before saying goodbye, and then Amanda headed back to her dorm. The dark cloud wasn't in the room when Amanda returned, but her essence remained. This was going to be a long semester.